Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to import custom 3D models into Adobe Dimension. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using a 3D model of a really cute little velociraptor, a dinosaur, why not? Oftentimes when you import models from third party sites into Dimension, you get the model in there, but you might not have all your textures, your roughness, your metallic maps, all that stuff that makes it look photorealistic. What we're gonna do in this tutorial is I'm gonna bring a model in and show you how to relink and reapply all those textures so it looks exactly as it should. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into it and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe Dimension and you can see I've created a new document. And we have lots of different shapes that come with Dimension on the left here. We can also switch over to the libraries. So if you download anything from Adobe Stock, you have your models here, you can drag and drop those in and they're fully textured, nice and easy. However, if you do want to download your own models from a third party site or create them yourself in another application and bring those in, they do come in a variety of formats. It might be .obj or .fbx or .stl. Those formats and a few others are supported by Dimension. So I'm gonna go up to File, go down to Import, select 3D Model. And I just happen to have this velociraptor.fbx file. Now yours might be a character, it might be a product. Of course, 3D models come in all shapes and sizes, and depending on how it's been created is going to determine how the rest of the process goes. It might be straightforward, it might be more complicated, but you can see I also have some textures here as well. So these are .tga files, but they could be PNG, uh, they could even be JPEG. You can use a variety of different formats. So I'm gonna click open. Uh, and it's off screen, but if I press F on the keyboard with my Velociraptor selected, zooms to fit, so that's very helpful. And you can see it comes in with no textures. Now, when I was practicing trying to bring third-party assets into Dimension, this is what most commonly happened. It would come in with no textures. How do I get the textures onto this? Right, well, what I need to do is go in, select an object inside the group, so not the group itself. You can see we've got a few different ones here. And as I say, depending on how the 3D model was originally created, will determine the layer and folder structure. So I'm gonna start with Raptor Mesh. That seems like the logical choice to apply some textures. So I'm gonna to go to base color and I'm gonna click on the base color and toggle over from color to image. And then I'm gonna open and I've got my Velociraptor.tga. Now, if it's been packaged up correctly by whoever created the 3D model, it will have something labeled base color or something like this. And if you want to check, just open that TGA file uh, with Quick Look on Mac or in Photoshop on Windows, and you can see it's the different textures and things that make up, well, essentially the base color. So I'm gonna go and open that. And you can see, there we go. We know it's worked correctly. If it hasn't, you can just uh, delete that and then go and try again. And depending on the 3D model that you're using, you may have a roughness map as well. You might have a metallic map. You might have a normals map. So as you may have seen, if I click on the plus here for normal, go to open, I have a normals map as well. Now don't ask me what normals are specifically. I'm sure you could Google a definition, but they're an important part of adding a realistic texture. It looks like this. So clearly I know that this wasn't the base color because it's bright purple. So as I say, normally your textures will be all nicely labeled so you know what's what. So click open and you can see it just adds a little bit more depth and realism to the character. So I can go up and turn on rendering and we'll see how this looks. Very cute. Now you'll notice that he's not quite on the floor. His toes or claws, toes? Raptors don't have toes. His claws or talons, whatever you want to call them, are digging into the floor. So I'm just gonna come out of this mesh, select the folder and click this icon here, which will snap our Raptor to the ground plane. And I can just move the camera and I'm just gonna create a camera bookmark as well. Now you may notice that our Raptor doesn't have any eyes. Well, he does, he has space for eyes, but no actual eyes. So what we can do is if we click on the Raptor, the model, it selects the entire group. If I hold command or control and click on one particular element, so you can see here the blue line indicates that I'm going to select the eye, I can then click and Dimension will open that folder structure and take me to that specific object. And you can see here, it's incredibly complicated. In fact, 
I can't even really see what the file name is. If you do struggle with this and there's loads of little components, just hover over an object and you'll see it says I left and then I shine left. Now, if I click on I shine left, I can go here, click on the base color and I can open this up. I have an I shine. I'll double click to open this. However, I did have problems with this. So this is just one of those things that sometimes it just won't work in dimension depending on how it's created. So I guess there's an infinite level of complexity here. But what I can do is hold command or control, click on the I. Where's that layer? There we go. And we can go and add in the eye. So I'm gonna do the same again for the base color, wrap to eye. And there we go, so that looks all good. So what I'm gonna do here in this instance is I'm just gonna select the eye shine with command or control, and then just press delete or backspace to remove. So we'll just do this on both sides. Sometimes it just works, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends on your model and how it was created. Now I can actually click on the eye go into this and then I can use the X and Y offset to move the position so we could make him look at us. Now it's worth noting that if you do have a character with eyes, this does affect both sides. But because we're gonna have him at this angle here, in fact, I can just jump back to my camera. What I can do is just make sure the eye is positioned correctly here. So there we go. Cheeky little guy looking at us. I can move this up and down. So I've got all the texture added, the character or the object is on the ground plane. We've added the eyes and things. I can go in and adjust other properties. So I could adjust the roughness. You can see it makes him a little bit more shiny. In fact, if I turn on real-time rendering, you can see how that really looks. And then what I can do is bring the roughness up and it's a little bit more of a matte finish. So if you don't have roughness maps or metallic maps, then you can just go ahead and play with these yourself. But as I say, if you do have them, you just click the plus icon here click on the folder, navigate to those, and it will bring those in. And if you do have all of those different maps, the base color, the roughness, the normals, etc., it's just going to give your 3D model a more photorealistic look. And there we go. So we got our little dino friend looking exactly as he should. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.